One of the women turned to me and said, do you know about the Pussy Whispers? I studied anthropology as an undergraduate and as a graduate student, both biological anthropology and cultural anthropology. And afterwards, when I was working as a writer and a social researcher, I realized they were, these were great tools. They were sort of wonderful lenses for looking at gender and parenthood and popular culture and female sexuality. So when I landed on the Upper East Side and I saw that this mommy culture was a separate world within the already separate world of the Upper East Side with its own migration patterns and beliefs about what a good mother was and beliefs about what it meant to be beautiful and uniforms and rituals, it really made sense to use anthropology to kind of crack the cultural code and try to figure that world out. I first heard the term Pussy Whisperer when I was at a party last fall, a very big, lavish, loud, fun party. And I was standing uh, in a small group with a bunch of other women, and we were talking about sex, as sometimes happens. And one of the women turned to me and said, do you know about the Pussy Whisperers? Are you going to write about that? So after this woman mentioned it to me at the party, I asked around and I spoke to women, some of whom had not heard of it, but some of whom had and wanted to talk about it and found it interesting. And I spoke to experts. And then I turned to the data. And really what you see from the data is that female sexual fluidity or female flexuality um, a, a really strong portrait of it is emerging in the sex research data and in anthropology. And that really this shouldn't come as a huge surprise to anyone. But what's interesting I think is that it might show that um, there's a shift of some sort happening in our culture and that it's happening even in more traditional parts of our culture. The Hamptons is one of the places where something like this might happen because contextual variables have a lot to do with whether a person has an affair or not or whether a woman acts on her sexual fluidity. So the Hamptons is an environment that I describe as a body display culture. Like Hollywood, the Upper East Side and the Hamptons are places where women really feel pressure to look young and beautiful and fit all the time, which puts them into very close contact uh, with female trainers. I think that the LGBT community and feminists, with their really hard work over the last decades, have opened up a cultural space where people can have these discussions and we can actually talk about what female sexuality and sexuality in general actually is rather than what we hope it should be or think it should be or how we feel it ought to be. We're much more comfortable as a culture thinking that younger women might be gay until graduation, that this is a phase or experimentation. And what might be surprising to people until they read the data is the idea that women might be sexually fluid throughout their entire life history and that it might not stop just because they're married and they have children. Um, but nothing really surprises me at this point. <laughs>